Hey guys, it's Sarah here from Edgecom Art and Design. How are you all? Look, today, a very, very quick video. I'm going to show you how I made this fabric in Inkscape. Um, I have a, a full tutorial coming in um, another week or so. I'm just still doing the editing for it, but I just thought I'd do a very quick little um, explanation of how I made this, show you how to uh, make the background, import the pattern that goes over the top, um, pull in the designs, and um, how to make that seamless. And so you get your uh, seamless pattern tile, your PNG seamless pattern tile that you can then upload to sites to create fabric. You can also use that same design to upload to sites like Redbubble if you have the um, correct license to use the artwork. And I haven't actually gone back and checked if I can use this because I'm not entirely sure that all of the these uh, print-on-demand license uh, artwork. So um, I can use it for commercial purposes, uh, but whether or not I can use it for print-on-demand, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, so let's get started with this and uh, we'll pop over to Inkscape. Alrighty, so super quickly, I'm just recreating, this is the original design space that I had for um, this artwork. It was a little while ago I did this actually, it would have been a couple of years. And I'm going to recreate this for you in a um, in a new document here. So what I have done is I have imported a um, seamless overlay tile, and um, I've got plenty of information on where you can go and get those from. Normally, Creative Fabrica is where I normally get mine from, and importing things like that into the document is just file import and um, you know find where you've saved your. Um, uh, overlay and click on it and hit open and it will pop into your document and Same with all of your artwork. I have already done that just for time's sake It takes a while to go and find all the little bits and bobs that need to go in and what I have done uh, file and document properties I have set my design to be 12 inches by 12 inches, which is fairly standard 12 or 16 inches square would be perfectly standard for this sort of thing and um, then that just changes the square. You don't need that. Inkscape's pretty good like that. Um, I like on Inkscape the fact that you've got this sort of area you can work on. I'm a little bit of a messy worker <laughs> with a lot of things. So the ability to pull in designs and pick and choose what I want to use is actually really helpful. Can you tell? <laughs> Anyway, I am in the process of cleaning up in here. We're still sort of moving rooms around even though it's been a few months, but we'll get there. All right, so very quickly, here we are. We're going to start off by creating a uh, square base for our fabric. Uh, just click and drag the square over. Make sure your, because um, I've been working a lot with stroke recently, that your stroke is off your square and your fill, in this case, I am going to choose black and I'm just going to make sure that is actually black by just uh, hitting the black um, on the... Uh, the um, color bar down at the bottom. I'm also just for this tutorial going to show you how to align that and I'm going to align that to the page and center and center and that will make that bang in the middle of the um, page for us. Um, and I'm also going to create some layers so I'm going to create this layer here we're just going to call this black uh, background and I'm going to create another one above the current, which is fine. And I'm going to call this um, overlay and another layer. And I'm going to call this, oddly enough, um, the design layer. I'm just going to add that in there. Now, we're obviously working on the black layer. We're going to have to move um, some of our work up to the other layers. You could import it into the correct layer. It might help. But since I've already done the importing, can't really do that. But this shows you what you can do if you don't do that yourself. So we're going to go um, here to uh, move selection to layer. And I'm going to move that to the over um, lay layer. We'll move that to there. And then I am going to select all of those designs. And I am going to layer, move selection to layer, design layer. I'm going to move those over to there. Um, and now you can tell that they're there because if I turn off the background layer, um, oh, they disappear. Yeah, everything else disappears. And if I turn, click off the design layer, they disappear. So it shows that that's where they are. Um, and then I'm just going to drag over in the overlay layer here this little overlay, I'm going to put it over the top of the, um, 
Oh, my black, I didn't, I didn't set my um, background correctly. Okay, there we go. Um, click on that again, and that should be 12 inches by 12 inches, which it somehow is not 12 inches by 12 inches. I'll just realign and um, distribute that to there, which should be fine. And then I'll get my overlay and pop that over the top. And I will do the same thing there, center and center, even though it should be right. Um, and now that is a tileable, um, a tileable design. Always check to make sure overlays and stuff like that are you know, a seamless a seamless pattern before you go and pop them in because you don't want to have your background having issues um, where it doesn't quite look right. And by seams, I have a video um, if you want to have a look at that just shows you how to check to see if your um, design is actually seamless. That just means that it will tile like this and um, there'll be no issues. So this is a square a square pattern and you know the bits that get cut off get put up the top so it doesn't look cut off like if you have a look on the screen there these look cut off but they're obviously not so it's seamless it tiles um, it's an all-over print all-over design Alrighty, now just to save a whole lot of bother, the reason why I put these on the layers is I can now lock those two layers. That means I can't move anything about on those layers and I can't accidentally click on this black square and drag it around, which is really quite painful. It can upset your design and um, cause you some tiling issues later on and you, particularly as a new beginner, are gonna be like, how do I fix this? Alrighty, save your work. All right, take a copy. When I tell you to take a copy of it before the one step, make sure you do. All right, so now what we're going to do is just place our designs on our um, on our page. So here we are up on the design layer, and we are just going to quite simply grab our designs. Actually, we probably should uh, duplicate a couple of these. See, this one looks like I've made it a little bit bigger here. Um, we'll move that um, move that around. Obviously, we can change that up. This one here again looks like it's duplicated down here and we are just going to go about and um, move these designs around. Now this was a, um, a fairly you know sort of an easy sort of a simple design that I did quite a while ago now but um, I think it still um, has a little bit of relevance and I like the topic you know anyway. All right, and then see here, obviously we don't want to collect, uh, can collect, <laughs> you know, select him. We want to make sure we've got this one, not that we can anyway, because he's locked on another layer. Um, and I'll just duplicate him. And you can see how he's kind of off the page a little bit. And we just kind of want to replicate that a little bit. And we'll just keep moving these guys around. Now, I strongly suggest you save your work. Um... If you haven't saved it before, you'll need to hit save as and duplicate. Right, and we're just going to move these guys around. So there we go. There's a few of those. Oh, I haven't collected these little balloons. So I'm just going to go back um, down to my bottom layer so I can duplicate and hopefully collect him. There we go. That's what I wanted. And I'll go back and lock that background layer except I haven't moved him up to the layer. Right, so click on him and I'm just going to layer and move selection to the design layer and move. Okay, so there we go. And this will be going somewhere in here and we can just, you know, move these around. We don't have to have these exactly exactly the way they were in, um, in this design, but here, yeah, let's just move these down to, um, down a bit. <clears throat> okay, I don't know. I lie. Not the best plan. I'm just trying to get them so we can see everything in here. Oh, what's happened there? Okay, I don't know what that is. That's okay, we'll ignore that and I will go back and figure out exactly what I have done another time. I probably dragged off a little piece of something I can see, yeah, it's probably this bit here that I have um, dragged off the screen. That's kind of annoying, but that's just the way these things go. It's one of the problems with tiling, gotta make sure you get these things right. Okay, uh, I might just re-unlock this layer for a second. Just bring it a bit closer so I can there we go, and I'll relock that layer. 
yeah I'd say I've accidentally pulled across a bit from there anyway moving along um, all we're going to do is just quickly go through and place all of these items into the um, the page uh, keys you're going to need to know if you hold the control button um, click on your object and hold the control button you won't um, unscale your design um, you can double click on it and get the grab handles so you can rotate your design control Z is undo um, you can also change the size by clicking on the um, uh, clicking on the item and then changing the width and height of it up here and you can use the lock button here to keep that the same so you only change one dimension and it will change the other one in uh, the same ratio uh, to that one if you click on a design you can use the flip button and the flip button this way and you can also use the um, 90 degree angle rotate button that goes along there as well so they're all fairly useful little wee tools for navigating around the Inkscape workspace. All right, so let's just keep going with this. I might just fast forward this a little bit so you don't need to see me um, prattling about getting all of the um, these into the right, right spot. Okay, so we're getting um, close to having this sort of right. Just a couple of little hints here when you're moving things around. If you're finding when you're dragging things and they're snapping and moving too fast, well, you can change the settings or sometimes it's just easier just to nudge it with the um, arrow keys on your keyboard. Um, and with the design, what you are wanting to do at this point is watch out for um, uh, where your designs are placed over the edge of the page because to make this seamless we're going to need to transpose whatever is up on the top surface down to the bottom so this little dove that's up here is going to have to come into about this spot here so you need to make sure there's room for him there and you don't have another object that is in that space so you'll see here that this butterfly and there'll be a room for it here and um, this dove maybe this um, heart needs to come over just a smidgen more but you also want to make sure you've got designs that go up over those areas too because um, if you don't have things in that area it's going to look like that part of the fabric is very um, very empty and it's going to look like you designed it as a square the whole object is to make it look like you didn't design it as a square so you want to make sure you have things that uh, go quite close to those edges to make sure that that kind of doesn't um, doesn't look like the case you want to spread things out um, a little bit um, a little bit more wherever they might need to go um, takes a little bit of playing around with it doing it this way uh, rather than in say um you know another design program where you can see this as you're going so as you put this one here it will appear over here and things like that so there are a couple of, um, of, of ways to do that and there is a way of doing that in Inkscape but I prefer this way for the moment because I get the the working area around the sides which is very helpful um, to me um, Anyway, we're going to have a little bit of a go with this because this is a um, an example and a test of showing how I created it. So we've got our background and we've got our overlay. We know that they're square and we know that they're seamless and they are all aligned. And we've got our design elements that we have put onto our um, onto our page. All right, let's see what else we can pop. Oh, we're missing like a like a dove or something from here. I mean a butterfly we'll just pop that we will pop him in um, yeah. being a bit slow today uh, we will pop that little 
butterfly down into that spot there and it's looking a little bit bare in there to be fair we might have to put something in there and we'll see how we go when we do the translation parts um, down in just a little minute okay so what have we got that's coming off the side of the page so he's going to come down here which is fine it's going to fill this little wig up a little bit more um, we're going to have a little bit of a space here and here so I might just move this little wee dove um, a little bit there and I'll duplicate a heart to go in here we're just changing the pattern ever so slightly and that's totally fine on this side we're going to have this dove come in just a little bit here um, we don't really have another butterfly oh let's there's another heart here so let's um, duplicate this one We'll pop that there and we can change the rotation if you want to to make that look a little bit a little bit different and we didn't have any um <clears throat> here we go we'll just pop another couple of things through we can move um, things around the middle a little bit easier a little bit later on so i'll quickly show you now um, how to do the steps function to change uh put these around the outside edges so we know our square is a um 12 inch a 12 inch 12 inch page which is very important for this we need the transform keys for this and we're going to select our little wee design here and we want to budget uh, over horizontally by 12 inches so we're just going to write 12 and make sure we've got 12 inches here this measurement has to match so whatever size you've made your your square your background you must use the same measurements in these boxes or it will not work so with your object selected, we're going to go Control D and we want to hit apply and it's going to move it over um, exactly 12 inches. So this little bit here um, is this little bit here and it's just all going to work. But he's also up here. So we'll fix that in just a little minute as well. This dove, he needs to go over as well. And we're still we've got we're clear of room there. And there is nothing else on that side that needs to move. Um, in the reverse we've got this little butterfly here and he needs to go negative 12 because we're going back the other way we've duplicated and pushed that and you'll see here that we have a little problem with that heart and that's not a problem we can just move him over if we can't do that because that doesn't quite work you can delete both butterflies and um, re redo that whole process again if you leave a bit of the butterfly there or change one side and not the other you're going to end up with a mismatch pattern and that is not going to be what you are going to want to do uh, and you can move around these designs in the middle a little bit it's only things on the edge you cannot touch so once you've you've done the steps function you can't touch that um, item again without deleting it and uh, re re-putting it um, around and about where it needs to go even if you are slightly suspicious that there is a little bit that could be over here you can see here put it over just in case okay it's just safest you don't want to miss a tiny bit of a beak or you know something along those lines and then go back and check so we've got one design two three oh no not him so one two three four five look that butterfly is there a curly bit off there he might very well be so i am going to control d and pop him over to i don't think so but it might just be the tiniest little bit there that needs to go over so it's safest to do that now we have to um uh, pop the ones that are down here up there Right, so we're going to delete the 12 from here and we're going to put the 12 in here and we're going to be going vertically in this case we're going vertically down first and because this one although we've put it over here he's also up the top so he also has to come down so we're going to hit Control d and we'll apply that and he goes all the way down there but look we also have this one that we're going to have to Control d and hit apply just in case there's a little bit he doesn't doesn't seem to be but I've done it anyway just to show you that we do need to do those things with corner designs um, he shouldn't need to come down this one we will bring down as well and then going in the reverse order again so control D put the little negative um, button in there and hit apply and he goes up and same with this tree one and hit apply and same oh we've got the bird he's there oh look just because we will we will do that i don't think so but i think that should be okay all right i am just going to use my um the little plus and minus key on the keyboard there to zoom out for just a second okay so there is our design 
uh, you can fuss and fiddle about, you know, with uh, you know little bits and things in here and move things around or add another designs or take out whatever you like. Rules though, make sure you don't accidentally move your background and also make sure if you move anything that's on a side border anywhere that you delete the corresponding one and you redo that if that's what you want to do. I uh, now I'm just going to re-unlock my background because I want to move if I can this away from there excellent that's what I want to do okay now this is important particularly if you are new to this step you need let's save it in case it crashes you need to save a copy of this before the next step it's quite easy to muck up if you don't know what you're doing so we're going to select absolutely everything and make sure um, you know if you think you've got everything like this these aren't selected okay even though you've touched them and they might even be almost in but they're not actually included you want to select absolutely everything and we're going to make a copy uh, control C and click up here I'm just going to hit control V you can also control and duplicate however I sometimes find dragging the duplication of lots of those things off can be tricky and you can um, end up leaving bits of your design behind if you have any problems or errors with that so I find control C and control V better for that little bit just a tip I've mucked up a few designs doing that particularly early on all right now next thing that we are going to do is I am going to duplicate the background so control D I, oh no I'm not going to do that actually because it's on a different layer I'm going to come back to the design layer and I'm going to unlock the all the layers I'm just going to grab a new square and then handle to corner and handle to corner that should be right but I am just going to check it so by going to my uh, inches function there and it should be 12 by 12 which should be right making sure that is 100% on the top of the design and it would need to be on your top layer of your design to make sure that it, it covers everything which is why I couldn't just duplicate that on the, the um, background layer there all right so now we're going to select absolutely everything make sure you have everything selected here and we are going to go up to object and we're going to go to clip and we're going to go to set and there is your tileable design that you can send off for printing so I'm just going to um, group all of those things together so I don't accidentally wiggle anything about always good and then we fly my goodness a mosquito in some description thank you for biting me I'm sure of it um, now we're going to export this you've got two options here you can export the selection I always find that to be the safest option because um, it just reminds me to make sure I've hit select so selection uh, we're going to hit export as And I'm just going to save it in my test um, folder here as whatever. Now you need to hit export. Just a couple of other things. Um, obviously this is um, at 300 DPI as well. Um, I always forget to tell people to check that because I have it all set up to be 300 DPI. I have a um, another video that shows you um, you know how to deal with that and it is a way in Inkscape this version of Inkscape if you've buggered that up and you've been designing at 100 dpi or if, if there's any issues or anything like that you can go into the advanced tab and change the dpi manually it needs to be like 300 dpi for print quality um, otherwise it just doesn't really come out it comes out blurry and we don't want that all right so now we need to see if that's tiling we're just going to pop over to Toil's tile tester <laughs> so we're going to our tile tester it doesn't look like this hang on oh, um, it comes up with just a plain screen I have a video showing you how to use toilet tile tester this is just because I was seeing if my stripe uh, pattern was going to tile which it does actually tile so here in tests we are going to find our design and of course I can't find it there it is and we're just going to click and drag that over to here all right now we're just going to look around and make sure we've got no little bits that are missing okay so you're looking for half of things that have been chopped off or any errors or anything that doesn't quite um, doesn't quite look right and that looks pretty good to me okay 
So that is how you use um, Inkscape to create a, a seamless pattern to create some fabric. Um, and that is the pattern design, that, that little file that you just saw, the PNG file. That's normally what you'd need to send off to a printer. Sometimes they ask for a JPEG and you can easily change that over. And in the next video, I'm showing you how to change that over into a JPEG as well. Anyway, so thank you. If this has been helpful, it would really help out my channel if you could give it a like or a subscribe. Um, it just helps the YouTube algorithms recommend this to other people as well. Any questions, let me know and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.